After the success of the new Resident Evil 2 released earlier this year, Capcom had a lot of work to do to meet fan expectations for Devil May Cry 5, the newest installment in another well-loved old-school series. Well, it seems the developer is very much on a roll. Devil May Cry 5 is everything a DMC fan could hope for and more. Still on the fence about picking it up? Well, just in time, here are five things we loved about Devil May Cry 5 and one thing we didn't. The thing about Devil May Cry 5 is that it never forgets that players are here to have fun. When you get into the full swing of combat, knocking out triple S ranks and testing out every skill in your repertoire, there's no feeling quite like it, and it often feels like enemies aren't coming fast enough. Plus, on PS4 Pro and Xbox One X, a solid 60fps amps up the action while the camera does a brilliant job of keeping up and for giving you consistently optimal views of a drop-dead gorgeous game courtesy of Capcom's RE Engine. The level of seemingly inconsequential detail that's gone into Devil May Cry 5's Red Grave City, a slightly remixed London, is staggering, and a testament to the humour of the developers. There's everything from a borough market to a devilish Regent Street to the slightly off underground signs and beyond. But despite its shiny new look, this is Devil May Cry as fans will remember it from its naughty's heyday. It's a rediscovery and thorough retooling rather than a complete reinvention. Because if it ain't broke, why fix it? This does mean that it feels and plays like a PlayStation 2 game, and honestly, that's really not such a bad thing, given Devil May Cry's history and the many reasons fans still love it so much. The original PlayStation 2 games were awesome, and you have to admire Devil May Cry 5 for resisting the temptation to give in to modern trends and instead deliver a game that is unashamedly old school. The focus here is on action and on pushing DMC's particular brand of action to new extremes in the flashiest way possible. And so intent is Devil May Cry 5 on doing so, it doesn't have much time for playing around with many brand new ideas. If trying out hundreds of different combo chains and getting to toy around with familiar but still shiny new weapons is your idea of fun, then you've come to the right place. The story also has all the twists and turns fans have come to expect from Devil May Cry, but though it's actually pretty well told, weaving together the movements of the three central characters while hopping briefly backwards and forwards in time, it never lets anything get in the way of a good fight. Levels are lavish, if a bit old-fashioned, there are awkward platforming sections, puzzles that are there to be blunt forced rather than seriously thought through, and it's here that Devil May Cry 5 feels the most dated. Perhaps it's because we've been spoiled by the set piece and flair of Bayonetta and its sequel, both those games having come out since the last number Devil May Cry, if you can believe it. But there's that strange feeling of playing a game so rooted in its PlayStation 2 origins, told with the muscle and flair of contemporary Capcom and its RE engine. Essentially, it looks great, but plays it very straight. That's not so much an issue when you're whomping giant bugs over the head with a chainsaw bike or tearing armoured knights apart with a demonic giant. But when you're wandering around on foot picking up your sixth maggoty hatchling key and stuffing it into your pocket only to take it around a corner and feed it into a weird mucusy keyhole, it starts to get a little boring. Thankfully, this mostly phases out towards the end of the game, allowing you to focus solely on the fun stuff. Guess there's no point thinking about it. Perfect timing. 
And it's when those red veiny barriers pop up and you're forced into combat that DMC's tried and tested formula of serving up age old thrills with modern visuals comes into its own. Devil May Cry 5 offers up three characters, available at different points throughout the 20 mission campaign. And each of those characters are so diverse in style, it ends up feeling like three very different games. And luckily, each one is his own brand of fun to play as. Nero, as in Devil May Cry 4, is all about wiring back and forth between enemies, but this has been leveled up with the introduction of the Devil Breaker, an ever-changing prosthetic arm that can be swapped out with consumables bought with orbs and loaded out before missions or just found on the battlefield. The consumable nature of this key mechanic takes some getting used to, but it opens up a whole new layer of strategy, and several new layers of depth to the game. Each type of Devil Breaker comes with its own unique attributes and moves. So one moment you might have access to a shockwave or a crowd controlling whip attack, while another moment will grant you multiple explosives or the ability to heal. The permutations are dizzying and make playing Nero a constant journey of improvisation and discovery. And though this will rub players who like consistency up the wrong way, there's no denying that it keeps Nero's sections of the game feeling fresh and interesting. In the best and worst ways, depending on how you look at it. Hey, honey. Need assistance? What the hell's your problem? You trying to kill me? If you want a bitch, blame it on Lady. She's behind the wheel. <sighs> okay, enough with the suspense. What do you need? You and I like to exist, so get rid of those demons quick, cause killing them ain't my stick. I got your back. Cause dying is whack. V, on the other hand, feels altogether new to play as. A sorcerer-style character with more than a hint of Dragon's Dogma about him, V introduces ranged play as he fights from afar with the help of his demon pets. The bird-like griffin, the spiky panther shadow, and big lunking demon nightmare, all of whom can be controlled remotely to whittle down an enemy's health before V must step in to finish the job off with his cane. It's a very different rhythm for DMC, and a welcome one too, even if, compared to his companions, V ends up feeling a little underdeveloped by the story's end. His familiars might seem, well, familiar too, having all featured as enemies of one sort or another in Devil May Cry 1. Just because he's a ranged fighter doesn't make his gameplay easy, however. Many enemies will prioritize attacking V over his animal friends, and at times the action can get so frenetic that it's difficult to keep tabs on everyone's location. That said, it's an excellent feeling when you're slicing through foes or raining down pillars of lightning, and then you use V's devil trigger to summon in Nightmare only to find him smash through a wall or hurtle down like a comet to take out multiple enemies at once. Summoning Nightmare at specific times can also open up hidden items and pathways, just so you know. See, a lot of V is new, but he's still built on the same mischievous sense of surprise and misdirection that has come to define the DMC series. DMC5 is full of such throwbacks and fan service, and there's no greater throwback than Dante himself. How's that for Road Rash? A playable compilation of the entire history of Devil May Cry. Though you don't get control of him until halfway through the game, he feels exactly as he should. And so painstaking is the commitment to making him feel faithful to his past selves, at times playing Devil May Cry 5 feels more like you're engaging in a Resident Evil 2-like remake than something entirely new. Switchable styles return, allowing you to flick between Trickster, Gunslinger, Swordmaster, and Royal Guard, giving you access to different movesets that can be used in tandem with Dante's huge arsenal of close and long range weapons. The sheer breadth of it all can feel a little unwieldy at first, though you're given plenty of room to grow into it, and there's the promise of depths to be mined for countless playthroughs later. It's all culled from familiar stuff, but this is, essentially, a greatest hits Dante, and funnily enough, 
It's the best he's ever felt. The pure, ridiculous joy of driving a motorbike into an enemy's face before cleaving it in half to smack some other bug into oblivion, before donning a set of flaming greaves to fly kick a bunch more foes in the face, is really just the best. And that's what DMC5 is all about. Gorgeous, over-the-top action that plays great and feels amazing to pull off. Invisible walls and slightly awkward platforming may feel a tiny bit like an early 2000s throwback at times, but the youthful energy that DMC5 applies to literally every moment it offers up is hard to resist. This is a more vintage type of action game, though that ends up serving Devil May Cry 5 incredibly well. Smoke and sexy style like this, after all, never really goes out of fashion. Did you enjoy Devil May Cry 5? Let us know what you thought in the comments and let us know who your favourite character is and why it's Nico. Click that subscribe button and keep an eye on the channel for new videos every day. And until then, try out one of the videos that are on screen now, why not? Thanks for watching. Bye!